Okay, good morning, everyone. Oh, sorry, it's afternoon. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Well, it depends on the part of the world that you are in anyway. <laughs> good afternoon, everyone. It's good to have us around um, for the third edition of our monthly um, webinar. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, we understand that we're all busy at our various places of work and um, taking our time to participate in this webinar. We don't take it for granted. So happy to have you all around today. And um, our speaker today is um, Mr. Obina Asogwa. Um, apart from being a medical physicist, he's, he's, he's the public relations officer of our great association. Now, um, Mr. Um, Asogwa is the lead medical physicist at the Asiupo Comprehensive Cancer Center. That's the newest radiotherapy, private radiotherapy center in the country as of um, 2022 anyway. Uh, before joining uh, Asiuko uh, Comprehensive Cancer Center, Mr. Obina was a medical physicist at the National Hospital Abuja for over a decade, if I'm correct, Mr. Obina. Yeah, so he was at the National Hospital um, Abuja. So he has a wealth of experience, which he'll be sharing with us so our topic today is um, linear commission experience. So he'll be sharing the experiences um, they've had so far commissioning their linear accelerator, which is uh, an elector model, yeah. And next month we'll also be having someone come and share um, uh, a, a, a physicist from another center that'll be sharing a similar experience, but from a different um, model of machine. So. Without um, further ado, I'm going to invite Mr. Sogwa to give us his um, presentation. Thank you so much. Mr. Sogwa, over to you. Good afternoon, senior colleagues, uh, professors in the house. Good afternoon, the immediate uh, uh, past president of FAMPO, the person of uh, Dr. Tafiki Gay. Good afternoon, my secretary general, and all the host of others you know, present in this uh, all important uh, occasion of uh, this month's webinar. <clears throat> Just like um, our Secretary General has uh, made mention, uh, it's just a, a unique one per se. It's not uh, an academic program, it's not an academic exercise, but uh, just um, the kind of practical experience we have had the last uh, six months uh, trying to commission the LINAC. So first of all, we witnessed from uh, installation to acceptance testing and finally the commissioning and the uh, going life of uh, a brand new Electra Synergy LINAC. And our center, as we all can see is, uh, is known as a super comprehensive cancer center located in Calabar. So I'm the, the lead medical physicist at the center. And uh, with me here, uh, uh, Mr. Chibu Zomado, and uh, Miriam Ebo, Clinton Ogese, and Victor Ebo. These are the physicists on ground. And uh, we didn't do this work alone. We did it uh, with the help or consultation of a very experienced physicist in the person of uh, Professor Addo from South Africa. But uh, on our own back here, we were really very opportune that we have been able to see this process from the beginning to where we are now. So it's good that we share this experience with our people and also encourage ourselves to try to do that in our various places, anywhere we can find ourselves. Because it's not, it's worth doing and you will feel good that you are a physicist. So moving forward. So moving forward, please, I just want to bring you, introduce you into our our facility, which is called Asupo Comprehensive Cancer Center, coming soon to Calabar and Nigeria. And uh, 
is don't uh, i just want to bug you a little bit with uh, just a very small video clip to just you know open the floor okay Thank you so much for that uh, short video. It just to introduce you to our small environment, but it's really, really might. So welcome to Asupo Hospital, Super Comprehensive Cancer Center, AUCCC, is the first private cancer center. And uh, for now, the only functional radiotherapy center in South South Nigeria. I just uh, put there as at 8th 8, of March, which was yesterday. So I don't know whether another cancer center just uh, came up this morning, but as at yesterday, we are the only functional radiotherapy center running all uh, gamut of uh, cancer therapy, both diagnosis and, uh, and all that. Because Asuko started as a diagnostic center you know, established by late Brigadier General Antonio Mbo of a uh, blessed memory, who had this vision of, uh, you know, making his little diagnostic center into a full-blown hospital and now moving forward to a specialist hospital or cancer specialist hospital. So, it's quite unfortunate that uh, he wasn't on ground again to witness the end point of what he started. But uh, what all of us here, myself and my team, and everybody that have worked with him have promised is to carry his vision to the conclusive end. So AUCCC vision is to be the foremost cancer center in West Africa utilizing ultra modern equipment for diagnosis and treatment of a wide range of uh, you know, cancers and cancer related diseases. That's the, the absolute vision of uh, our center. So, <clears throat> so just to move into our, our today's business, the aim of this uh, webinar is to report our experience during linear commissioning and uh, also go a little bit further to showcase the beam modeling, the beam modeling that was done into the treatment planning system, which by the day is going to be used for clinical use. So in our Super Cancer Center, we have such equipment like the linear accelerator that we have there, which we call LINAC, it's an electric synergy linear accelerator, agility head with 460 you know, MLCs. MLCs, as we all know, is the multi link polymeters. And the, our linear accelerator has three photon energies, six megavolts, 10 megavolts, and 15 megavolts photon energies, and also five electron energies. 4 mega electron volts, 6 mega electron volts, 9 mega electron volts, 12 and 15 mega electron volts. And all these energies are all fully activated, calibrated, and absolute dosimetry has all been done on these energies. So these energies are fully for clinical use. In our soup bowl, so we have a brachytherapy machine the, uh, called the Flexitron. HDR, high dose rate brachytherapy machine. Flexitron is also a product of uh, Electa, Electa PTW, or Electa PTY. Uh, is uh, one of the you know, one of you know the best you know brachytherapy machines in the in the market today. But in our support today, the machine has arrived by the source that is the HDR source is is here to be manufactured. So instead of uh, getting this uh, source before we start working and the source will stay on site and start decaying, we decided to just put that on hold until we are ready to take, then the source can be ordered and manufactured. 
So we also have city simulator. Our city simulator is a wide 90 cm bowl canon city. Uh, luckily, that is the largest you can find in the market for now, 90 cm bowl. And in the, in the in the West Africa region, this is the, the first that you can see from the you know the canon city. We have a wide range of dosimetry equipment, but uh, of very, very uh, big importance for us is the beam scan. The beam scan 3D water tank is actually a very nice, um, you know, uh, a, a, a piece of equipment, which we are going to see in the course of this uh, presentation. We also have the Octavius 4D uh, equipment, which is basically for patient-specific QA and also for daily and periodic QA. We have some uh, parts of this uh, Octavius that can be used for daily or periodic quality assurance. The preclinical pre procedure for a, for a new Linux or for new Linux, these are the list of uh, the procedures starting from installation. Installation is done after the machine is delivered to site and they are unpacked. Then the is the, the responsibility of the manufacturers, which was also signed during the, the, the contract, the purchase contract, that that as, as an engineer that is coming to do the installation of this machine. So it's also, it's purely engineering, but it's also good that physics around to see, especially some of these parts before they go into the machine, it's good that you see them, but at least you'll be able to appreciate whenever you see some of these parts on the on textbooks or hear it somewhere, you would you know, have a picture in your mind or your head how those parts looks like. So after the installation, acceptance testing follows immediately. For the, uh, the stage of acceptance testing, physicists are fully involved because it's actually the physicists and the engineers that will sit down together and bring out the other uh, documents or the purchase documents. And from there, we'll be able to know what was purchased and what's is uh, delivered on site. And after that, we also test the machine to make sure that if you said we, we requested for 6 MV, requested for 15 MV, requested for 10 MV, that what actually you are giving us is nothing short of 6 MV or 10 MV or any type of energy. And we have a number of procedures like the beam quality, the iterative quality, and the, the scanning procedures to do to make sure that the, these machines, the, the energies and all these other components are you know, accepted. We have a number of uh, systems that we have to access. We have uh, the acceptor, acceptance for the model of the energy. We do acceptance for the, for the treatment table, which is the patient support system, PSS. We do acceptance for the IVGT. IVGT is the uh, portal imaging devices that is uh, used on patients almost on daily basis. And we also did acceptance for the VMAT procedures. After this acceptance is done and signed off, then we can now move to commissioning. Then during commissioning, which we are going to see in the course of this uh, presentation, we have a number of uh, uh, procedures, systemic procedures that we need to do to make sure that this machine is actually commissioned and the commissioning data is now modeled to be used in the treatment planning system. But this treatment planning system that is delivered actually is purely empty until you commission a machine, get the data of this machine and load it to the treatment planning system. That is when you can now be confident and be sure that what the treatment planning system is generating is actually what is um, uh, 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 what the what the machine can use for clinical purposes. From there, now we move to, to training. There are a number of training: the CT training, the Linux Linux integrity training, the planning system training, the oncology information uh, system trainings. That have to be that have to follow 
finally you can now go live into using the center and the machine for clinical use. This is uh, our acceptance reports signed by the physicist and also by the uh, elector marketing physicist and the beam modeling you know, uh, physicist. So we have to be sure that we, are, we have carried everything as it's supposed to be and under the condition which you know elector or the manufacturer have specified before we can now be sure because if you didn't carry out this uh, process there's no need of signing it off because anything you sign here now is going to be related back to elector and you are now taking full responsibility that your machine is safe to be used that your machine that what you have uh, what you have ordered is actually what was delivered to you. So after that, now this report is generated and signed by the physicist. What is commissioning to say? Commissioning is the characterization of a linear accelerator involving the measurements of all those metric parameters necessary to validate the dose calculation algorithms of the treatment planning system. And this is used for optimal outcome for each radiation modality, either electrons or photons, and any treatment technique to be used in the center. So when we say that the, there are a number of uh, dosimetric parameters that need to be collected, these dosimetric parameters uh, comes in form of data. The, the depth dose tables, the beam profiles, the output factors, the scatter factors, all these data will be measured. And it's not just that we just measure this data, this data will need to be validated. So they need to be validated, that is during the process of uh, modeling. And once they are validated, then they can now be modeled for different dose calculation algorithms. For elector or for treatment uh, planning, uh, electric treatment planning that is the market, they have three major algorithms that they use for those calculation. You have the pencil beam algorithm, you have the collapse cone algorithm, and the Monte Carlo algorithm. So, depending on the treatment technique and radiation modality that is available for you, you need to model your data based on that which you have. If you have only 3D conformal therapy, there is no need of modeling your, uh, your, your data for Monte Carlo because 3D, uh, 3D conformal therapy, you know, utilizes the pencil beam and the, and the collapse cone uh, algorithm. But if you have to do IMR TV math in your, as part of your treatment technique, you must go ahead to model for Monte Carlo uh, those calculation. So these are the list of data, a wide set of data for photon and electron beams are acquired, which includes profiles, which I've said. In profiles, we, we look at the flatness and symmetry for the, the beams of this machine, then those curves and electron isodose charts, square, rectangular, and asymmetric open and wedged fields starting from two by two to 40 by 40. Two by two actually is the least of the field that you can, you know, that you are required to model for, for VMAT, IMRT, and 40 by 40 field. You know, you need to model, get all this data for both square, shaped field, asymmetric, wedge field, all those combinations, but they are well stated on the manufacturer's uh, or the requirements for treatment planning modeling. Those points measurements in reference and non-reference conditions. So it will be uh, those points you know, defined that one need to collect all this data for both reference and non-reference conditions. And we also go ahead to collect the output factors measurements, output factor measurements including for small fields. This actual factor measurement is for phantom 
factor, fa uh, phantom scatter factors, the head scatter factors, and all other ones, all the other scatter factors. Then scans of shaped fields for model verification. There are different kinds of shaped fields which you need to get so that by the time this model is actually done, you can use it now for verification. And there is also a, a, a very important software as, um, as given to us by Elector, which is called the MCU, which is Monaco, uh, Monaco uh, Commissioning Utilities. So these are the kind of uh, things that you get once, you, once this uh, equipment is purchased. And finally, fine tuning of beam model, beam model parameters. So by the time you collect this data, there, there is, you use this MCU to fine tune these beam, beam model parameters so that at least it will be easier to, to model by the modeling company. This model you know, actually are not done here. So the, you have to fine tune your beam data and now make sure that it's acceptable, acceptable you know, for uh, to match with the global data, you know, uh, that is residing with the manufacturers. For our commissioning journey, for commissioning, photons and electron beams were all collected, which we did. For depth dose, scatter factors, profiles. For photon beams, all beams were collected with leaves and diagrams defining the feed edges. So you'll be told what kind of, uh, you know, beam data and what kind of conditions. Some of them will have to be without leaves. Some will have to be with diagrams only, but these are what actually define the feed edges. For electron beams, data was collected with and without applicators. Photon scans were done at 90 cm and 100 cm SSD were required. These are based on manufacturer's specification. In air points, those measurements were actually done by 100 cm SSD, so as to scan or sense the detector distance. Also did in air measurement for scatter factors with a brass build up cap in empty water tank. The brass build of tank is to make sure that you remove the, 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 the head scatter factor and you have a pure scatter, which is the phantom scatter that is required by the model, by the modeling uh, uh, physicist. We have wide range of detectors, which we use for this uh, uh, process. We have the cylindrical and plane parallel ionization chambers, wide range of it. We have the small volume ionization chambers for measurements of small fits, as, as low as 0 0.07 cm cube volume of ionization chamber. We have 0 0.03, we have 0 0.3, up to the pharma chamber, which actually is 0 0.6, you know, CCC of ionization chamber. Then the strotatic and electron photon diodes. These are also supplied. So in case in the, let, in the, in the future you want to do strotatic uh, uh, treatment, you have the diodes for that. Then the secondary standard chambers and the electrometers for relative and absolute output measurements. <laughs> okay, this is uh, the water the beam scan, a 3D beam scan with its reservoir. The reserve, this reservoir here is where the water is reserved or where the water is stored. While you, you want to you set up to do your measurements, this water can be you know, pumped up into the water tank. This is actually the water tank with all its, uh, you know, uh, cables and uh, the ionization chambers attached. So, and this actually the, the setup for photon beam collection. During this setup, a number of uh, procedures are uh, followed, carefully followed, not just followed, but carefully followed, because you need to make sure that your 
tank does not introduce errors. Because if by end of the day, you collect your beam, collect your beams and you do your analysis for their beam, and you find out that there, is, there are errors based on what the manufacturers have said that this should be, you need to be sure that your, your setup actually is right. It's not just that you are beam, because you, you may have issues of going to tell the manufacturers or making a false statement that you are no, these beams are not good, but you have, you know, your, your problem may be coming from the, the setup of your tank and your, your, your usage of this um, equipment. So this equipment need to be studied. You need to have training. So the first, first set of training is to have training on your dosimetry equipment, your usage. Because if you don't use this uh, dosimetry equipment the correct way, definitely you continue to have errors. So that is our, you know, the setup for our photon beams. So this is the setup for our electron beams. Uh, we, uh, so this, uh, what, what differentiates from them is that you can see the applicator on, and this applicator, once you see that this applicator is on, you know that we are about to take measurements for, for electrons. And this applicator, you need to also go through the specifications, you know, as uh, given by the manufacturers. Either you are collecting a beam at 100 cm SSD or you're collecting a beam at 95 cm SSD. From the head of the machine to the tip of the applicator, where the end frame, what we call the end frame is located. Actually, the end frame is what defines the field, the actual field. We have this number of applicators. They come in six by six field size. They come in 10 by 10, 14 by 14, 20 by 20, 25 by 25. Some centers will have a rectangular applicator of six by 20, okay? So the, from this, from the fixing here to the end of the, the, the beam, the end of the uh, electron uh, cutout or the end frame is actually 95 cm. So if your manufacturer has specified that you need to collect your electron beam at 95 and also need to collect it for 100, you must be very, very certain that you have set up this applicator the way it's supposed to be. Okay, so this is a, a sample of the PTW software that we use for all our uh, 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 commissioning, all our beam data collection. So we have in the in this Mephisto navigator a number of uh, you know uh, applications that you can do. We have multi QA, linear QA, absolute dosimetry, relative dosimetry, in vivo dosimetry. And this is configuration where you configure your both your chamber and your your tank and every other thing that you need to configure before you start using them. So there is need for absolute knowledge to get absolute knowledge of this uh, you know equipment before you can you know venture to to go into them. Because if you don't understand this equipment, you can stay forever on this on this uh, stage and you may not be able to move forward. So what we just show, what we are just showing here now is an example of the, the PTW Unisoft IAEA uh, TRS-398, you know, for absolute uh, beam dosimetry. So you can see that this is also, you know, this is just an easy way to get this because this Mephisto now can also do, you know, give you uh, an online or electro uh, electronic a, 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 a electrometer, electrometer that you can use to collect your your data or you can need to collect your charges and and feed in these boxes here now and by the end of the day you can get your absorbed to absorb those of water. But just to be on the safe side, it's not too advisable that you just believe everything that is here. You still have your your manual write up or your IEA uh, whatever uh, the CRS 398 worksheet where you can now do manually. Once you do this thing manually, you check with what the, the software is giving you. So that at least you are sure that you are there. For absorb dose to water, which we all know, 
is DWQ, LW, which is the chamber uh, calibration factor, the KQ, which is the beam, beam quality factor, and the MQ. MQ here now is the corrected electrometer reading. So that is going to give you your absorbed dose to water. And this absorbed dose to water, you have to calibrate it, you know, um, have to calibrate your lean accelerator, that is the MU, to correspond with your absorbed dose to water. For example, you have 100 centigrade to give you 100 MU. That is the aim to get this absorbed dose to water for uh, no, using TRS-398. Okay, this is our approved beam profile for, for photon PCC is called is photon collapse cone for 20 by 20. Just an example of one of our you know beam profile, which we did at uh, you know 20 by 20 cm open feed at 90 cm SSD. So this is the voxel size. The voxel size is also determined by the software. If you check this um, the beam profile here now, you see the the, the, the broken line is the calculated and the solid line is the measured. So by, by, by the time you finish this, uh, your measurement, you load this thing. Now this is actually something that came from the MCU, which is the Monaco Commissioning Utility, that you are not far away from what the global data have said. So global data is actually the calculated from the from the company or from the manufacturers, and our own now the one we measured is this now. So this measurement actually comes in a very rough way, but you need to analyze your data, and the software will just give you that um, you know uh, the opportunity to fine tune your data and try to be as close as possible because this is uh, all these things are also measured in percentages so once you are able to meet your percentage difference this your data will pass and at this level you don't have you would have been able to know if you have if your data is actually good before you send it to the modeling company because by the time if you don't know this and you send it to a modeling company they will definitely you know return it back to you Forth and back, forth and back until this data is uh, is uh, done. So, but Electra on their own have improved on this uh, process so that it can reduce the time. Because from my past experience, the model data takes sometimes takes more than one month, takes more than two months or three months to return back from the manufacturers. Within, within the a space of two weeks, within the space of two weeks, one week. Our data was back because we have actually done a lot of work using our MCU. So this is actually a very big uh, improvement on and also uh, you know uh, reducing the time that is required to do commissioning for the uh, for for linear accelerator. Most of the time you hear that the commissioning would take up to so six months, you take up to you know three months and do those kind of things. But with some of these things on ground now the timing for commissioning have actually reduced if you understand the process and know what you need to do. So if you see these uh, uh, curves here now, they are at different depths. These are at different depths, but the whole thing is at 20, 20, 20 by 20, you know, feet size at, and an open field of 90 cm SSD. There are also one for 100 cm SSD, 80 cm SSD, depending on what the manufacturer have asked you to do. So with this point here now, we can see the total point that was analyzed, the number of points that passed, the percentage of points passed, then the number of points that failed, percentage of points that failed. With this now, these are what you need to see before you can set this data. So with this now, we know that your data will definitely pass through the modeling for, uh, process. Okay, this is just another example for, for electrons, for electron profile. So applicator that we use here now is 10 by 10 applicator, uh, then at, at SSD of 100, and this is 6 MV uh, photon applicator. 
So, I mean, photon energy, sorry, photon and energy. And you can see the beam profiles. So the, the that line, the sodium line is the measured line, while the dotted line is this, you are able to, to see that your, your data or the one you are collecting is actually following the right procedure. So once you plug some of this data into the, your MCU, it will give you, you know, a plot of this sort, and you will be able to know that you are actually doing the right thing. So this is the, which one is, okay, this is the depth dose table, the depth dose curve for this energy. And you can see both the dotted line and the and this other line, they match very well, and also determining their gamma uh, index. So for linear commissioning, it generally time consuming. One one not one just need to know that. So one needs to be absolutely sure that there is a clear understanding of every process involved before commencement. That's what I talked about training on the equipment that you need to use. You don't just jump into it. You identify that you have the right equipment and you also understand the use of this equipment. The choice of tools to be used for each procedure must be selected prior to commencement of this process. At least you reduce your time. Then finally, the, a good knowledge and working, a good and working knowledge of the software is also needed. We we we, we fell into several you know setbacks because of uh, you know we didn't understand the software that was given to us. So at every time we shot what we did throughout the process is to open up to open our line or to open our line to the manufacturer of those softwares uh, or the dosimetry equipment, which is PTW. So at every point in time, we communicate them back to make sure that you know uh, we don't have or we are not uh, doing anything wrong. Any process that we do not understand, we go back to the to the manufacturer. And lucky enough, we had very good working relationship with the manufacturers. And believe me, they are all willing to help. This is the time. This is the time now we have to know that. You know, relate our relationship with our, the manufacturers of our machine is very key. It's no longer the time that we have to just get, you know, somebody. At least it helped us because we are growing. In, the, in this country today, we can have this good direct communication to the manufacturers. Not that you want to do this thing now, you have to wait for another person to connect you, or you have a foreign physicist coming into the country doing this work. And, and just go, you are just looking. When are we going to you know, do it ourselves? So it's a very good experience that we are able to communicate and this knowledge can also be transferred and make available to everybody. It is also advisable that before the commencement of any process or measurement, it should be evaluated. Yes, you need to evaluate the process. Evaluate, evaluation in terms of the time is going to consume you so if such process or measurements will be achieved within the specified period, otherwise it shouldn't be started. So if you, do, if you are not sure of the timing that you need to take this thing now, please don't start. Wait for the right time, because this is because it may be very challenging to reproduce the same environmental conditions and set up as seen from our experience. For example, you want to collect a depth dose uh, table, or you want to collect depth dose data or profile data, or do absolute dosimetry. And you find out that ah, you want to close from the office by five o'clock or by six o'clock, and you start this, uh, this uh, data collection by four or 4.30. 4 within 30 minutes or within one hour, you may, you know, time may choke you and you want to rush. It's not something tomorrow I continue where I stop, no. Once you start any process, it is very, very key that you finish this process so that you don't, uh, so that you don't have to, to deal with the, the, you know, the issue of uh, changing of environmental, ambient environmental condition, ambient temperature, and even your setup. Because the setup you have done yesterday may not actually correspond with the kind of setup you have done today. 
So we have these issues that most of the time we have to collect data and we mess up those data or we find out that those data do not correspond because of this time factor. So, uh, okay, this is just a front pointer. Front pointer, as we all know, is used to determine the, the ISO center. The ISO center in the room, in, I, I, all of us know what ISO center is. It is just an arbitrary point in the, in the space where we have to have both the gantry angle, the kilometer angle, and the table rotation angle meet at a point. And there is also a laser system that is in the room, which also define your ISO center. So the best mechanical you know, uh, check for this ISO center is with the use of front pointer. OK, this is uh, when we are trying to set up uh, our patient-specific QA tool. You are seeing here now it's called an inclinometer. It is a component of the Octavius. Uh, but uh, we do not have Octavos set up here now. We are also going to show us the picture of Octavos. But this is uh, our consultant physicist, Professor Ado, you know, trying to put us through with this uh, setup or commissioning of the quality of the QA tools for, for us. So end-to-end -end tests. End-to-end -end testing and workflow training done with a frozen chicken. Actually, we have we decided to use a frozen chicken because frozen chicken will somehow somehow give us the different structures of the body. There is fat, there is bone, there is soft tissues, there is air, you know, uh, around that. So we decided to use this frozen chicken. This is the, the time this, the, the simulation for the frozen chicken is done by our radiographers, therapy radiographers. So the laser, uh, the laser system is also used for the positioning of this, just which will also ensure the reproducibility. So after this is done, we planned, we did a, a treatment planning for this frozen chicken and we used, uh, we treated this frozen chicken for a number of times, following the right procedure. So that is the end-to-end -end test. End-to-end -end test will start basically from the reception where this patient is registered. The patient is seen by the doctor. Decision is made. Then the patient moves to simulation. The, the simulated uh, images you know, are sent, uh, they are sent for treatment planning. And after that, treatment plans are developed for this for this uh, image, then treatment of the, of the image or treatment of the, the patient is done. So that is the whole uh, process called end-to-end -end test. There are also a number of phantoms that can be used for this, like the CRS phantom and the rest. But you know, we just decided that we have to use the, this one that is actually available to us. So that is, this is the, the Monaco planning for the chicken. See the Monaco planning for the chicken? The doctor just gave an arbitrary uh, uh, you know, volume to be treated on the chicken. And this plan is developed. Just a very simple plan is developed. Uh, it's just a, a plan of uh, APPA. APPA is an anterior and posterior plan. Anterior at uh, zero degrees, gantry angle and posterior at uh, 180 degrees gantry angle. And such a plan is developed. And this is the, the DVH for the plan that is developed for this chicken. And this is the beam eye view and different windows for this. And we just prescribed like 10 gray in, uh, 10 gray in five fractions, two gray per fraction, you know, prescribe those at a particular uh, uh, point to the chicken using our interest point and markers. So that is another uh, process altogether. But this is just like the environment of our of our Monaco treatment planning system. So coming to the challenges that we faced during our commissioning, one is time. Many dosimetric measurements took time to set up and carry out to completion 
within the working hour. So with this, the entire commissioning process took us as much as eight weeks between uh, October to December. Yes, and uh, it's not that uh, this time can actually be reduced, but depending on the knowledge and how conversant are you with the, the working tools that you have. So the new equipment took time to get acquainted with, you know, the dosmetric equipment, understand and get comfortable working with them. So some, something that you are using newly, you have to also be very, very careful that you don't break it or you don't spoil it. And also you apply the right, you know, procedures that need to be applied. Yes, we had some issues with uh, uh, incomplete equipment, like what we call the true fix. The true fix is uh, actually the chamber holders that we are supposed to be supplied to us. Actually, so actually the, the true fix, you know, we had some of these uh, true fix that were not delivered. So we try as much as possible to improvise. But by the end of the day, we didn't have option that's also to wait for this uh, type of equipment to be shipped to, to us uh, at, the, at the time it came. Then the volume of work, several measurements were taken. Okay, several, several measurements were taken for each of the eight energies at different depths and field sizes, cross planes, in planes, dimples, and, and the rest. So a uh, number of data I can, I can surely tell us that we collected more than a thousand data for, for different uh, procedures. Then the COVID restrictions, because we have a, a consultant physicist that have been uh, you know, you know, uh, 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 contracted to provide us this expert uh, service, it was uh, delayed from coming. So, so to travel to Nigeria became a very big issue. So we have to you know, put our head down and make sure that we get this thing done. So by the time the consultant physicist came, he was really, really very impressed to give uh, to give us kudos in all the work that we were able to do within the time. So this is just a, a part of uh, his report when he was here, and uh, you know it was really a good one. So welcome to Asuko. The grand opening ceremony will be coming very soon, and we are committed to closing the gap for cancer care. Thank you for listening. Wow, thank you very much, um, Mr. Sogwa. I really, really enjoyed the um, lecture. I really enjoyed it. It was uh, very practical and uh, well explained. Thank you so much. We have some questions already in the chat, and I think we would like to um, give people the opportunity to, to, to ask themselves. So if you would like to ask your question, you can just put up your hand so that we can unmute you, or we can just read it from the chat if you don't want to speak. But I have my own first question. Um, what, what happened to that chicken um, afterwards, after you had done it? I want to know what happened to <laughs> Nigeria is hard today, and you are using two frozen chicken. For, for your end to end test, what happened to that chicken, please? I'm okay. interested. <laughs> okay, actually, just a quick one for that. That chicken ended up in uh, some people's uh, stomach, you know? I'm very so sure. And, and, and the cancer, uh, the, the disease of the chicken ended up with that. So you can, uh, the rest is now a story. So actually, we use that chicken for a number of times by. You know, so that at least it was also, also part of the training, you know, that our radiographers also used to, you know, understand patient setup and all that. So it was quite a good exercise for us. Thank you. 